Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. I am in this spectacular place. Behind me is an incredible mountain range here in Glencoe called the Three Sisters. And I've got to tell you, it is quite spectacular, especially on a day like today. Now, very briefly, this is what my intention is today because I photographed here quite a bit and I've made a few vlogs from here as well. But every time I come here, I always say to myself, there's got to be more. As much as the places that people mainly visit at this location are quite spectacular, this place surely has to offer more. So my intentions today is to head down there, if I can, because the water level's quite high at the moment, get across the other side, and then walk all the way up and around there, looking for points of interest in the foreground I can use to shoot the Three Sisters. That's the intention anyway. Right, this is usually the most favorable place to get across. And it probably doesn't look like it in this camera, but that is actually quite deep. Um, <laughs> very, very deep. Rocks are generally slippery, so you probably think you could stand on there, jump on there, and then you're across but it really isn't that simple. So if I can't get across here, I'm gonna have to maybe go a bit further up the river just to see if there's more of an accessible area to cross. All these rocks down here, they're all very slippery. I know on the video it's gonna look really easy, but trust me, it's not. Now the problem is I'd rather walk around up there in my boots, but I've gotta get across this deep-ish water. And in which case, whirlies are the order of the day. And as we all know, they're always slippery. Oh no. <laughs> That's how deep that is. Look. I'm not sure if you saw that, but I nearly went in. I've already, I've already lost one Z8. I don't want to lose another. Right, let's try somewhere else. This might be okay here. The problem I've got is it's a bit of a drop down here. And if I can get across, I might not be able to get back up. <laughs> Let me show you guys here. Again, these things never come across really well on camera, but Looking down, I think I could possibly go out to there, mosey across and maybe jump that bit there. I think that's a possibility. You guys aren't gonna be able to see any of this, unfortunately, but I've chosen my route. And I'm now gonna use your tripod and my tripod to balance myself going across. And if it all ends up tits up, then you'll be in the water the same as me. <laughs> I'll leave you on so you can hear my Puffing and puffing. Oh, it's so slippery underneath. I put my pants over my wellies just in case. That'll give me a bit more waterproofing. Oh man. Oh. Right, I'm right off the top of my wellies. Oh, slippery, slippery, slippery. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Gonna go for it. Ooh, deep, 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 deep. Whew. Whew. Where are you? Water over the top, of my wellies. I am so glad that I put my pants on top of my wellies because it certainly helped a bit. But I can still feel a bit of water in my wellies.
So look, thought I'd be cool then. <laughs> Let me explain what I'm doing and what my thought process is because I'm a big believer that landscape photography as a genre of photography is incredibly easy. My thought process is this, and it can be said the same for most genres of photography, in that here, the point of interest is these incredible three sisters, this incredible mountain range here in Glencoe, like I said earlier. I want to photograph them. Now to photograph them, I could just pick up my camera and take a picture. But all I've done there is just taken a snapshot of an incredible mountain range. To make it a complete landscape picture, in my opinion, all I'm now going to do is wander around and look for something of interest in the foreground to complement it. These rocks here I've just walked past, never seen them before, and they look incredibly inviting. They look very interesting, so therefore I could create a composition using these guys here as foreground interest. There's a small rock in front of me there. I could use that small rock as a point of interest as well in the foreground and balance it up with the three sisters in the background, and that would also complete the picture and make it a nice landscape picture. Now, will it make it a perfect landscape picture? Well, of course, that depends on how nice the foreground is relative to how nice the background is in terms of weather, conditions, lighting, etc. There's all those other things at play here, of course. But in terms of creating compositions, it's really easy, in my opinion. So all I'm doing now is I've walked away from the normal place, the place where people normally go. And okay, I've hiked up a mountain and it's not for everybody, I get that, and I've still got further up to go. But to my left-hand side, there's a valley with a river running down it. I've got these incredible rocks. Up there, I can see jaggedy rocks that might only look jaggedy from this angle. They might not look jaggedy from up there at all, but they look really cool and really interesting. So I'm just wandering around, trying to find a point of interest to complement the Three Sisters. Nothing any more complicated than that. These rocks are incredible. I mean, look at me standing next to them just to give you a sense of scale, a sense of size. I'm gonna photograph these because just doing a bit of camera, I could see in camera. Wow, they look really cool. What an incredible place. It's just incredible. Now, I was heading up to the rocks up there that are jutting out the ground, and I said I was gonna start from there and work my way down, but I can't bypass this because I've walked past this lone tree behind me, and that is just, just incredible. That is awesome. And if I can figure out an angle where I can place this tree to use it as a really interesting foreground, um, bit of interest to complement the three sisters, possibly only photographing two of the three sisters, by the way, then, wow, what? I mean, every landscape photographer loves a lone tree. I mean, it's almost law-like, isn't it? That is gorgeous. I mean, look at that tree there in relation to, okay, two of the three sisters. Now, you might not be able to see it stand out so well from there, but if I position myself lower down, to push that tree high up. I could possibly, possibly, it might even be a bit too big. But if I move myself a bit further to the left, easy said than done, but if I can make myself move a bit further to the left-hand side, then we could have ourselves a winning composition. It's times like this that just make landscape photography so worthwhile. That's it now, camera's out for the first time today and this is where it's going to stay. Before I have a look at this, let's throw you guys in camera so you can see what I'm seeing as per normal. I'm not going to do this with every composition but let's do it with this tree. So I'm looking 
at something like that. Make sure we're nice and focused to begin with. I want to go come out a bit further, raise it up. I'm going to move my camera ever so slightly to fine tune this composition. A couple of things I don't like at the moment. The tree and the top of the middle sister, the first sister's up here, that's the middle one. So I'm only going to be able to get these two, but that's perfectly fine. That's, that's wonderful. But this tree here is a little bit too close. And I'm going to try and separate them ever so slightly. So I'm going to move myself a little bit further to the left hand side. Now, I know at the moment the tree is in the ground. I understand that, but I'll get that shot first of all and then I'll try and place that tree in the sky if I can get my camera low enough. Right, let's get myself a little bit further to the left hand side. Not much. Possibly something like that. See so just that little movement to the left hand side. Now I've placed the tree bottom right and that is much more comfortable top left making sure I've got lots of room up here for the top of the mountain to breathe again so so important and I tell you if I wanted to take a longer exposure to get a bit of blurring in the sky I could actually take a separate image to freeze the tree although the tree isn't moving at all but because the tree is in the floor it gives me an opportunity to take a separate shot just purely for the tree if it was to move Okay, so in theory, I've got my tree shot. So what I'm gonna do now is expose for a two minute exposure. No, I want a four minute exposure because that sky isn't moving too quickly. So a four minute exposure is what I might need to go down to. Can I achieve that? Yes, I can. I love it. F22, quarter of a second, ISO 64, that's pushing this camera, pushing it, pushing it and pushing it. That with a 10 stop filter on equates to four minutes. Now I think I found a, a really nice sweet spot. This works really well. I've managed to get a composition low enough so that I can create a bit of a gap between the tree and one of the sisters. And there are the two sisters in the background. That big rock there looks fantastic. I might just come across just a little bit more get everything set up something like that that's really nice that's a great shot what a find what an absolute gem of a find Doing a bit of B-roll on the iPhone, and that works. That works there. That works a real treat. Ah, uh, yep, you guessed it. I'm gonna have to grab my camera and grab this as a shot as well. So I've made it up to where the river cascades through or beside the three sisters. Oh Jesus. Oh no, 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 no. No closer than that. That is a drop down to your death. Oh, oh what? And there are the jaggedy rocks that I've meant to have gone to at the beginning of this video. I spared you the huffing and puffing. But these are the jaggy, sticky up rocks that I noticed from down below. And I think, I think they'll work fine. Those in contrast with the mountain. Yeah, beautiful. And look at it up here. Look at this. Ooh. I would not want to slide down there though, I've got to tell you. You probably can't see it on there, but it's a tiny little lone tree.
this deer up there. Oh, this GoPro is too wide, you won't be able to see it, but they're looking down on me, very curious, obviously. Right, this is right at the very top. Again, wow, look at this. I wonder if I could go the other side and grab a reflection picture. I doubt it because I've got this in the way, including another tree. It's not quite a lone tree, but look at that. If I wander across here and down comes the rain again. Ooh, 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 now then. Now then, that's nice. Oh, this is horrible. Again, it's damn rain. So best I could do is a short duration in terms of a shutter speed, pre-focus, two second delay and get your timing right. Let's take a couple of shots. Perfect. There you go. Ah, it just won't work from here. That's a real shame. Even if it wasn't raining, I wouldn't be able to get a reflection. I don't think I would anyway. I would have the first sister if I came across here if I got myself nice and low down here, for instance, I would definitely get a reflection. So that's gonna be for another day. From here, it looks quite nice because there's a combination of a lone tree on the right, mountain on the left, and a reflection on the floor, possibly. I've come this far, it seems rude. Not to make it all the way to the top. That is, that is such an impressive. Now the climb down to this lone tree here is a little bit steeper than I anticipated, but I sort of committed. But on the way down, I've noticed looking down the valley all of the trees jutting out that I think would make for fantastic foreground interest. So while I'm here, I thought I'd grab a shot. Last shot of the day. I've definitely left this too late. <laughs> I'm back at the stones where I said I was gonna come back to, to grab the shot. And now the clouds have come in again, but I'm gonna take the shot and call it a day. Because I'm blooming knackered. I know I've done enough of this already, I know. But let me throw you guys in camera. I just set my camera up. I've not done anything really except switch it on. And that's what I'm faced with. You know, a shot like that. Maybe lift it slightly and that's pretty much gonna be my composition. That there that you could see. There you go, just to show you guys, I've moved across just a little bit more. Let's get that a bit brighter so you can see. There you go. That is definitely going to be my last shot from this location. That is it. That is me done here at this rather incredible location. I think it's fair to say I haven't exhausted this area at all, but this area has definitely exhausted me. So all that's left for me to say is help support the channel by giving that like button a bit of a nudge. And if you're new here and you want to find your way back, I've got one or two fairly decent videos, I think anyway, in my back catalog, you might want to consider checking out. 
Until the next time, guys. Oh, by the way, if you do have a, have a favorite, I'm not really sure. If I've got a favorite, I'm not really sure at all. But do me a favor. Before I go, I'm going to have to take one more picture because it's cleared up. <laughs> Feel free to leave a comment below. <laughs> Also, I've got to try and navigate my way back across that water and back to the van. Till the next time, guys. Cheers. 